the co-production training and the youth charter for Kent that we have, well, the young people we work with have developed. So um, I think one of the real, really sort of the real advantages of the Head Start programme um, was that actually co-production was built in um, right from the very beginning. Um, it was always part of the plan. Um, so that meant that we really could get young people involved in every level uh, ev with everything that we do, really. Right at the beginning as well, the young people said that they wanted there to be training for staff around um, work you know youth voice and co-production but not only did they want staff to receive the training young people themselves wanted to deliver that training so this is what we're going to talk to you about today so creating the training then so in autumn 2018 we got young people together from head start kent speak out kent youth county council and virtual schools kent which we're going to talk to you a bit more about in a second, to plan the co-production training and develop the resources which we use today. So we got young people together to develop an understanding of co-production and why that why we do it and the benefits of co-production to an organisation and for young people. An insight to young people in Kent, learning about the pressures and stresses they face every day, planning for co-production and how to make it success for young people and the organisation and understanding where co-production already happens within services and how to engage with these different groups. So the young people that we work with chose to use Heart's Ladder of Participation as the main focus of their training. So we've got a little bit of a game next. So this is um, an example of an activity that the young people produced for their in-person training. Um, for those of you that are not so familiar with Hearts uh, Ladder of Participation, the idea is very simply that on each rung or each number there is a different level of um, participation and involvement. And so, you know, different pieces of work and different projects will sit on different like sort of levels within that ladder. So when we are, uh, if you picture the scene, we're in a room, we've got uh, a big participant, you've got a big ladder in front of us on uh, like laminated because we're posh. And then each group has an envelope. And so you in your envelope, you'll have some scenarios. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put the scenarios up. And if you want to just pop in the chat, um, sort of what number of the ladder rungs you think that would sit at. So scenario one, please, Zoe. So imagine you're a, young, you're a young person, you're sitting on an interview panel and a part of a group of young people interviewing three candidates for a new participation worker. So in the chat, um, have a little think, what um, rung of the ladder do you think? And we are aware that's a very small bit of information. So, uh, you know, go. what's your instinct? What l l rung of the ladder do you think scenario one would be? got six, got four. Right. So then we have another scenario. And what and this time what I want you to do is think about if we're going to give you some different information, does that change where you think on the ladder it would go? So scenario part B. Uh, you were first asked to be involved in the interview panel a few weeks back and had to take part in a full day's training course on recruitment and selection. You spent time going through the job description and personal specification, agreed the four questions to ask the candidates and set a task for the candidates to, to come prepared with. So now that you've had any more information, do you think that that goes higher on the ladder, lower on the ladder? What are we thinking? Still got quite a few at six. Right, so it's at this point that everyone in the group, everyone in the room goes, well, we'd put it higher. And there's other people looking and being like, well, hold on, that isn't what we'd put. And that's because the young people are quite sneaky because actually the different groups have different scenarios. So this is scenario part B, and then we've got uh, part C, which is you got a text from a worker yesterday inviting you to take part. When you arrived today, you were given a list of questions to ask and told the names of the candidates. So as you can see from the previous scenario to this scenario, actually this scenario, uh, part C, would be lower on the ladder because we are just say, sort of shoving a young person in a room to do an interview without that preparation, that training um, and things like that. So yeah. 
sorry. So that was an actual example used for in the training. Thanks, Hannah. So as we said a minute ago, one of the groups that took part is Head Start um, Kent Speak Out. So our Speak Outs are for young people aged 10 to 16 or who have an interest in building their resilience or who have been highlighted to us by youth hubs that need support in building their resilience. So the meetings are fun and interactive, unfortunately, due to this um, the C word, the COVID that's been happening for the last year. We have moved those online, but we do still try to make them as interactive as possible. Our local speak outs, um, which we currently have three running, meet fortnightly. And then every month we come together in a central speak out at Kent Youth Voice. Um, Hannah would also like me to point out at this point that in that image, it is not her telling off the young people. That is just her pointing. That photo gets used so often. It always makes me cringe because it looks like I'm shouting at people when I really wasn't. OK, um, another one of the groups that we were um, involved is uh, the Kent Youth County Council, and they are, elect they are our elected body of young people in Kent. Um, we elect around 40 young people as members each year and then 40 deputies. They work on campaigns, um, but also uh, this is where our um, elected uh, members of UK Youth Parliament come from as well. So yes, the last group that we spoke about was um, Virtual Schools Kent or VSK. So VSK is run by a different participation team to Hannah and myself and they facilitate various young people's youth councils across the county. Um, so they have a super council for children who are in care and that is aged from 7 to 11. They then have a children and young people's council for young people aged 11 to 16 and then a young adults council for young people aged 16 plus. Um, So we brought all those three groups together for a training day and then uh, we actually uh, rolled out the in-person training. So um, small groups of young people undertake uh, two days of train the trainer training um, in which they look at the sessions and the resources, they adapt it um, to deliver it how they want, so where they might mix up the icebreakers, etc. Um, we've trained over 80 members of staff um, before COVID happened. We've, lots of these people came from KCC, obviously. Um, we have trained our emotional wellbeing teams, which I know are called um, mental health in school teams or, you know, other things around the country. Um, we also trained staff who attended our annual Big Conversation, which is an event for young people where they under take like different workshops around resilience and uh, emotional well-being and staff feedback from that was that actually they didn't have anything to do when the young people were in workshops so of course we got some young people and they trained them in the co-production while uh, their young people were in uh, workshops so we also um, took a group and we trained our divisional management team, uh, which is chaired by the children's services directors and all the uh, managers uh, report to, who report to them are invited along to sort of make strategic and important decisions. So yeah, very serious, like very serious meeting, lots of uh, big bosses there and the young people train them. As part of that training, we ask people to write pledges. Um, and so we get them to hold up their pledge, usually on a very fluorescent piece of card and take photos and put them on the social media so that actually we are holding them account for the pledges they've made. So at the beginning of the pandemic, when everyone went into lockdown, obviously we couldn't go and do co-production training in real life. So we went and spoke to the young people because we still had a lot of requests coming in for co-production training to be happening. And they decided that actually maybe we could move the co-production online. So the e-learning was created. So the young people again, were at the heart of how this was developed and due to the excess due to the successes of the escape rooms and murder mysteries which we developed over the lockdown period to keep our young people engaged they decided that they wanted to produce some form of escape room or murder mystery as part of their co-production e-learning um, so we were really lucky actually that in Kent we have um, learning solution developers and our learning solution developer Louise, well that was a bit of a mouthful, 
um, worked with us sometimes very patiently um, to build our e-learning. So we're now going to show you one of the activities within our e-learning. OK, so this is uh, an example. We've adapted it in for the e-learning, but this is the sort of idea around the uh, murder mystery escape room type. So we'll start with the cookie in the car, I think, please, Zoe. And what we're going to do is the idea is you want to get as many green cards as you can. So we're going to um, wait, read out the example and then in the chat, just pop down which uh, one you would like to pick and then we'll go through. OK, so our first one then is you have planned your meeting and invited young people from across the county to come. You realise that you have not organised travel or food for your session and some young people have replied that they are not able to attend due to not being able to get to Maidstone. What do you do? So do you A, explain that you are going to reimburse them for their travel to Maidstone and also provide a lunch for them? Or do you B, explain to the young people that you are sorry they are not able to attend and find somebody different? So pop in the chat. Do you think it's A or B? OK, yep. So we've got A, yellow. Yep, A. OK, so good job. So we've gathered a green card. So you've been able to engage all the young people you invited as you have provided them with transport and lunch. So we're going to go back. This time we'll click on the chair. OK, so you arrive at, to a session early and you see this. You see the room is set up in rows. You were told you can set up the room however you want, but realise you don't have much time before the young people arrive. Do you change the chairs around so they are not facing the front or leave the chairs in rows? There's not long before the session starts. So do we think it's A or B? OK, we're going with A, please, Zoe. Good job. Uh, the young people seem more relaxed. This has made it easier for them to become involved and the session win the session you have planned. OK, so we'll go for our calendar. So the calendar then is you have been asked to set up a meeting with a group of young people. Looking at your calendar, there are several dates for which you choose from you talk to your co-worker and they help you narrow your choices down to two days. What day do you choose? Do you choose the 17th of May at 3.30 or the 10th of July at 4pm? This one, people are thinking about this one a little bit more, Zoe. OK, yep. Yeah. It's looking like B, please, Zoe. OK, so good job. So again, you've thought about factors which could have affected your event if you had planned it during busy school times. Obviously, May is exam season, so a lot of young people that we work with wouldn't want to participate. Oh, I have to click again on the next one, don't I? Sorry. OK, you've recently been tasked to update your website to make it more young person friendly. You have a group of young people you've been working with who could help you co-design the site. What do you do? So you could offer to the young people in the group you're working with to co-design the website with you. With young people on board, you hope this will make the website more accessible or ask the group that you are working with for their ideas. It might be that they do not work and therefore you're able to plan the website on your own, which will make it easier for you. What do we think, team? We're going with A, please, Zoe. Good job. Um, the young people worked with you to design your website. You designed it in accordance with their ideas and have noticed an increase in engagement with the website. Which means our last one then is our dictionary. So you plan your session and realise that the slides have a lot of abbreviations on them and jargon. You consider taking them out, but you have spent a lot of time creating your PowerPoint and it would take a lot of time to go back and change them. You ask a co-worker for support and they give you some advice. What do you do? Do you go back and change the slides to ensure that it can be understood by all? Or do you just leave the slides? It will take you too long to complete and you'll just try as it is. All right, this is a definitely get lots of A's coming in this one. Okay. 
So again, good job. You've decided to go back and change your PowerPoint. This will make it easy for the young people to follow and for them to engage and help with your code design. Excellent. And uh, these cards are actually um, scanned from the uh, Snakes and Ladders board game that we use in the in-person training. That the, so the young people came up with all of those scenarios. Um, well done, team. Um, we got them all right. So we got all... Uh, greens the the red ones as you can expect to like oh no don't do it like that um okay so next up i think we have a video of um a young person called jack who's going to tell us all about uh his involvement of developing the youth charter for kent hi i'm jack i'm a member of head start and have been for three years after being referred from early help i've been involved with the youth charter from the beginning I want to make sure that every young person in Kent has the same opportunities. It is really important that young people are treated with respect and equality so they feel comfortable to get involved. We made the youth charter to make sure that every young person has the same experience with the service that they're getting involved with. I was a part of the group that developed the six pledges and we ranked lots of statements to finally agree on the most important things needed in the services we use, such as cadets or youth clubs. I really hope that the Kent County Council will listen to our voices and lead the way for the youth charter to happen. Thank you. OK, so that's Jack then uh, talking about his experience with the youth charter. We were tasked with uh, developing a youth charter because we knew that all around Kent there was loads of really good work um, about youth voice, co-production happening, but there wasn't really anything to bring it together and there wasn't really enough opportunities for staff and practitioners to sort of reflect on what they're doing um, and then make improvements. It was also highlighted that young people felt that they didn't necessarily know what to do or where to go if they were if the service they were receiving wasn't what they expected or they wanted to make a complaint. So we went to uh, 29 different um, groups of young people, including special schools, um, a PRU, um, and various other groups. And they ranked some statement, they came up with statements, and we collated that all together um, and then basically got together uh, of another group of young people. Um, so again, the uh, Speak Out Young People from Head Start, the KYCC Young People and a VSK um, Children and Care Council's Young People, got them all together in one day uh, for them to actually sit down and write the Youth Charter. You can see here we've got our pledges, they're the main um, titles. Of course, we wanted uh, the plan was that we wanted young people to come up with one nice design um, and young people don't always uh, do what we want like that. So we've actually got two versions of the design. We wanted them to come up with a new jazzy name, um, but they liked Youth Charter, so it's called Youth Charter. Um, we really didn't want it just to be a poster that goes on the wall and everyone just forgets about. So yes, there is a poster which you can see there, but it's also got a range of activities and workshops for both staff, uh, young people to work either together or um, in like a sort of workshop or in, you know, in the youth club to really like look at where they're at with the youth charter and what they can do to improve. We really wanted opportunities for young people to lead those sessions and just have a whole range of different um, opportunities uh, going on. So yeah, it's you can sign up through our Resilience Hub website, uh, which um, basically when you get uh, when you sign up, you get um, an editable version of the poster, so that you can change the top bit there that says to your sort of strap line or your what's it called? Mission statement, that's what it's called. Um, and then at the bottom, um, it's also editable. So we've got on there our comments, feedback and complaints procedure. Um, but, you know, so people can put their own on there and update with your own logos and things like that. Um, so, yeah, that is our youth charter. Um, I think